Good morning, good afternoon, good evening all over the world. Dobson777A here. Hey, this video is going to be about prepping. I've uh, been working on some things in the background I told you about where I was trying to improve my egg incubation capability. So I've actually went off and bought a much more professional setup than the uh, jury rig thing that I had uh, set up. And then secondly, um, been working on getting my sausage making capability. So I'm gonna share with you that. And then lastly, we were able to uh, harvest our garlic. So I'll show you some images there. But uh, we had a some family come into town for Memorial Day. So uh, I hope everybody had a great Memorial Day. And I'm gonna do a second video today for um, about precious metals and uh, some of the conversations I've been having with folks uh, but I wanted to get this prepping video out first uh, because this is probably a much higher priority for me personally than my precious metals of course I've already have uh, you know got my positions there as well as the miners and uh, but I just wanted you to know that this is uh, something that I'm constantly working on all right so on with the show all right, here's my new uh, egg incubator. And I'm pretty happy with this. This is called a Little Giant. Okay, I looked at a number of uh, incubators and this particular one uh, kind of caught my eye. Uh, so this is a Little Giant digital and it's 41 eggs. It has an internal fan, an egg turner, everything built into this. And this is... Uh, pretty straightforward. I, I thought this was like the easiest looking thing. So this is this is what it looks like empty over here on the left and then here's what it looks like with the eggs in there. And you set the eggs in with the uh, smaller end down and the larger end up. And then these kind of rock through and I'll show you in the video how this works. But this particular one I ordered it uh, through Amazon and I think I got this thing in maybe five days. So it's, I thought this was a pretty, pretty good uh, value. Uh, I think I'm gonna say 150 bucks. I can't remember the exact dollar amount, but it was something like that. But for the capabilities of this, I think this is exactly what I was looking for. Made in the USA. This holds uh, 41 eggs, uh, at least uh, chicken eggs. There's uh, some rails you can get where you can hold a whole bunch of quail eggs if you wanna do that. But this is uh, a fantastic, little setup. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I've had this running for several days and I had a nice uh, stable temperature and I've been collecting eggs over the last couple days uh, so I had 18 of them. There's going to be a few more coming in yet today from my chickens but I'm going to try to at least fill this up halfway. Um, but I wanted to show you what this thing looks like. So on the bottom side there's this uh, this is like a fan with a heating element part of it. And then this is part of the, I assume, the temperature measurement capability and also humidity. Uh, real simple construction. Inside, we have these uh, rotating trays, and they actually kind of move like this back and forth very, very, very slowly. And so right now you can see I've got uh, 18 uh, filled in here. And this can be removed and eggs can actually just be laid on the bottom and then there's these channels in the uh, styrofoam that you can put water in. So I've just filled up a couple of them in the middle because I'm not exactly sure how much it takes to get the humidity where you need it. But uh, anyways, there's a little motor over here on this side. Some of the earlier models, they actually had this place open and they noticed that uh, there was some heat coming off the motor and it wasn't uh, helping the egg uh, production so they've now blocked off that spot and that's why you know there's uh, there's six of these uh, we'll call them trays and each one of them holds seven except for this last one down here you can see that one only has six positions okay there's a simple little display on here and right now it's saying the humidity is uh, 50% and the temperature 76.6 because I've had this open while I was loading it. But I watched this over a couple days and I'm telling you it held within 100 degrees, like a half a degree within 100 degrees, very closely. Now some of these eggs are pretty cold because I had them in a the warmest temperature I could set 
you know, a second refrigerator that I had, and I think it was like 48 degrees. So I've had them sitting out for several hours down here, but they were still pretty cool. So it's going to take a while for this thing to get back up to temperature. Um, there's these little uh, plugs right here. These so that you can allow um, air transfer inside there. And so I've actually removed one of the plugs as it recommends because this is where the heating element is. And they said uh, remove that plug towards that side. But anyways, this is uh, super simple. So all I did was I dated each of the eggs and then I numbered them. Um, you know, one through what I've got right now, 18. You can see the numbers marked on there. I just used a pencil. Now previously I would used a permanent marker and I decided a pencil is probably a better idea because um, depending on what the carrier is for the ink, you know, alcohol or something else, you don't want that to be transferred inside the egg. The egg is uh, somewhat porous and so I decided a pencil is probably the safest way to do it. I've seen a lot of people say you could do either way but I think this is a, a better approach. But I got a nice table here in the corner and it's uh, out of the way of a lot of other stuff. It's not going to be jostled. In fact, it's next to my big old battery rack. And uh, this is a nice temperature controlled area. So we'll just watch to see how this works. There's uh, three settings, on three controls. So you have up, down, and set. That's, uh, that's it. The manual is very straightforward. Um, there really isn't anything you do here. I think uh, I think all you do is you set your eggs in here and after 18 days what I plan on doing is taking these out setting them into a separate location on one of my heat mats so the last couple days they're you don't want they call it like locking down the eggs you don't want the eggs to be turning anymore you need to lay them where the they can move in the hatching position and so I'll have a separate location for that you know over here on my heat mat and then uh, they'll finish their hatching and I can actually start another batch of eggs so essentially every 18 days I could uh, have you know this thing cranking out chicks in theory anyways so we'll see how it goes so I hope that's uh, hope that helps you but I when I looked at everything this was like one of the uh, most cost-effective yet you know higher quantity type uh, incubators that I could find and so this is also US made by the way notice the big old sign made in the USA I probably should look at the individual components to see if there's markings on those but in any event this is a pretty straightforward I do have another uh, styrofoam container that uh, when I had my tamales delivered and I'm thinking about turning that into my the last couple days uh, where the eggs are going to be hatching I've, I can rig up a little uh, temperature control, allow the chicks to hatch inside those two halves. So that's what I've got in mind. So we'll, we'll get that going. Anyways, I thought you'd, uh, thought you'd enjoy this. Okay, so I've been busy trying to gather up everything I need to be able to make my own sausages. Uh, I thought it would be another great way to take advantage of a lot of the meat that I've grown. And so I've, I did a lot of research and this particular uh, seasoning had uh, won one of the better prices uh, and also the, the amount that I could order and just really good reviews. So I decided to get, I got five bags of this. Now it just so happens that each bag will make 50 pounds of sausage. So that's a lot. So I'm probably gonna make like a 20, 25 pound batch first and uh, see how it works, but I'll show you the other things that I've had to buy as well. Of course, you need uh, casings and everything, so let's look at what casings I settled on. So this is the uh, casings that I settled on. So this makes uh, 125 pounds of sausage. So, that, I mean, that's a lot of casings, but apparently this will last a long time. So once I get set up, I'm probably just going to, you know, probably do like uh, 25 pounds the first day just to see how difficult it is, and then I'll just go hog wild and make a whole bunch. I'm thinking about making bratwurst and everything else. So let me show you the other things that I've had to come up with. So I decided to get a uh, meat mixer. So this you can do 20 pounds at a time. 
And I mean, you could conceivably get like a big stainless steel pot or bowl and then try to stick your hands in there and mix the thing all up. But um, this would actually give you a much better results. So I decided uh, this is what I was going to do. And it, and it wasn't terribly expensive. In fact, you can see right here, um, this was $134. This one has like a gearbox or something on there. All right, I had to go back and look to double check, but yeah, I did get the one with the gearbox on here. So that's that's what I got. And to tell you the truth, uh, I don't know what the difference is for the gearbox unless it uh, just makes it easier to turn when it's loaded with uh, meat. All right, so this is the last thing. I got a sausage stuffer. Uh, this will make it very easy. This actually has uh, two different um, settings that you can put this handle on on the side. Let me see if it shows. Uh, yeah, so up here, you see how this has a different position. You can put the handle on, so this is more of a slower speed. But this is kind of cool the way the thing tilts towards the back so you can load up your sausage in there. And then this is where you would put your casing on. So this is a super duper uh, setup. And again, I thought for the price, this is kind of unbelievable. Now, the one thing you'll notice is I'm getting things that are that I can use in circa 1800s. No power required, human powered, uh, all stainless steel. And I just thought, man, this is really a solid uh, type of equipment that everybody should consider. So here's a picture of the two items, the nice stainless steel things that I bought. So one of them is the meat mixer and then the other one is the uh, sausage stuffer. So I think they actually look really good. I might set up something down in the basement for doing this, but uh, I mean, they take up a lot of space, but boy, I think that'll make life really easy. Now I had bought this probably over a year ago and I made a whole bunch of uh, Brunswick stew. And this is uh, from Harbor Freight and it's just a, not the greatest uh, for durability and everything, but I've, probably already done like 30 pounds of meat. So I'm going to try to use this for my uh, sausage, grinding up the meat and everything. But um, if you were going to be doing a sufficient quantity like I'm planning on doing now, I'm probably going to upgrade this to something. Now right now this is electric and it seems to work fine, but I don't, there are manual things that you can mount on the countertop, but boy, you'll kill yourself probably trying to grind uh, you know, 100 pounds of meat. So I kind of recommend you get something to aid with that. But I mean, I put chicken, I put beef, I put uh, pork through this thing and it uh, worked just fine. So just want to let you know, this is probably the cheapest thing I got and probably the thing that you need to be the most durable and, and I didn't get that. So I'll have to work on that next. But um, $50 and if you, um, a lot of times they have these coupons, 20% off uh, one item, and I think that's what I got for this. So anyways, not a lot of money out of this, but need you to be aware that these are available as well. All right, decided to check some of my garlic, and uh, these are actually pretty good size uh, bulbs. So I'm going to go ahead and pull them out of the ground, because uh, they're, they're definitely ready. You can tell by the yellowing of the stalks on the bottom. So, oh boy, it smells like garlic when you pull them out too. So here are my garlic. I mean, this is a big old pile of garlic. So I got to get them hung up now so that they can dry for a couple weeks. And then they will be ready to go. There's some big old bulbs on here. All right, so I went ahead and hung my garlic up and I got uh, four pretty good batches here. It's probably not great lighting, but for Memorial Day, ribs oh my god these look so good too do you see that empty spot there there was a really thin one that got done early and i said i had to do a little quality control so i did but anyways there's some really good sized bulbs in here i'm pretty happy i guess they came out well I left them in the ground a little bit longer to try to get those bulbs as large as possible and I think they came out better this year. But you can see how the leaves were all turning yellow 
and especially along the base they were already turning brown so they were ready to come out all right well that's uh, one more thing off the list all right i hope you enjoyed the show please make sure you uh subscribe hit the bell um also comment i like to see your comments i try to help everybody that i can and uh I uh, hope everybody's treating you well. I hope you're doing well. Do the best you can. God bless.